Hi, I'm Marcus Fares, founder and editor-in-chief of Dezine, and I'm speaking to you from our broadcasting studio in London. Today, we've teamed up with tequila brand Maestro de Bell to launch a limited edition bar tool designed by Mexican design duo Pedro y Juana. I'm joined by the founders of the studio, Ana Paula Ruiz Galindo and Meki Roos. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do. We have a studio in Mexico City where we create architectural objects. What's it like in Mexico? I keep hearing so many good things about the creative scene there, about the bars and everything like that. What's, what's happening in Mexico at the moment? Mexico is very layered. It has a lot of cultural um, I guess, uh, moments and interesting situations that we tend to grab from. And I think many designers are doing the same. So it's exciting. And many new galleries are opening up, even in this time. So it's quite... But it's a huge spectrum also. I mean, it, right. runs, it runs from food through right. uh, <clears throat> the, the, the entire creative industries of, of uh, art, design, uh, architecture. And of course, Mexico is famous for many things, a lot of food, a lot of culture, but also tequila. So tell us about how this collaboration with Maestro Dobel came about. So one of the most recent projects that we have designed is called Quejolote for Maestro Dobel. They were looking for someone to do this very collectible item that could relate with tequila. So before you tell us what you've actually designed, I think you're going to give us a little presentation. Sure. So what drives our work is the history and materiality of objects. We like to fold stories into our work, stories of the history of the object, the history of the material, or even the context that all of these things take place on. This is uh, Archivo Pavilion, which is a competition that we won in 2012, which is in the garden of the now defunct Archivo de Diseño y Arquitectura. We designed an object for the archive, the design archive, that when stacked and, and uh, proliferated would take the shape of a amphitheater analog to building a wall out of bricks. This is Casa Reyes. It's in Merida, Yucatan. It's an annex to a colonial house that we built out of a very simple material. It's just block that we turned it on its sides and where by filling in certain orifices, we're able to create a more diaphanous wall that allows light to come into the room and also allows the the view to pass from one patio to the other. This project is called With Love from the Tropics, which is a hanging garden inside of the MCA Chicago, where we created individual greenhouses that are lamps and planters. This is the pavilion for the Young Architecture Program at MoMA PS1 for these events that they do on the summer in New York. So it's called Oramarama, and it's a cyclorama of a jungle of images taken out of the web and basically creating a new environment on top of the different courtyards of the MoMA PS1. Since this is a project that needed to be built and taken down quickly, we relied on off-the-shelf construction methods that are omnipresent in New York, the scaffolding and two by fours and two by sixes. So basically the thing goes up, goes down and is repurposed. Now we arrived at the project that we did for Maestro Dobel, the Tejolote, which is a tool to be able to create drinks or spices for your drink. So it basically consists of the tejolote, the pesto, and the mortar, which is made out of basalt from the volcano of tequila. And the pesto, the tejolote, has the ability to grind in one side with the basalt, and in the other, you can squeeze a lime. So it's basically a lime squeezer and together they form this beautiful uh, form. 
The inspiration for this object came from these very early pre-Aztec pyramids of stacked pancakes, <laughs> which we like very And everything, much. all the houses around it were also built concentrically. Everything to just look at that center. Was something that inspired us to think of how we could use that form. The, the volcanic rock tequila grows out of the blue agave plant is also being used for the Mexican cuisine. The roughness of the volcanic rock is very conducive to kind of squeezing out the chiles and, and uh, tomatillos and tomatoes and uh, actually also serves as a, as a serving container. The alchemy of the mixing ingredients and, and uh, kind of fusing them uh, in, in kind of the analog of the distillation of tequila interested us. So this is a tool called the molinillo or chicoli that is used to whisk chocolate. So you basically grab it from the, from the stick and you continuously whisk. So that there's a history to, to kind of all these objects that interest us. We were thinking about different ways to contain liquids or to be able to mash them. So of course, as we always do, we, we made a, a few iterations till we finally got to the tejolote. It comes in this beautiful box that also repeats that motif of the Huachimontón. It also has this moment of revelation. And the pestle part of the tejolote is made out of uh, local walnut. Nogal, it's called. It sits on top of the volcanic water part. And we worked with two very talented craftsmen, the, the stonemason. And a wood worker. And we figured out a way to mix all of these materials together. This is El Maestro Fraga. Uh, Juan Fraga was the best mason, a great person that we work with and who has unfortunately passed away and we want to kind of dedicate this uh, product and all the products that he has made are still living in this world. So, but he was not only a great Mason, but also a fantastic human being. And we very happy that we got at least to make this project with him during these times. Yeah, he will be dearly missed. Normally when you think about bar tools or bar accessories, you think about shiny metal, very polished things, but your piece is very earthy, isn't it? So is that, you, you mentioned that it's based on a traditional pestle and mortar, but are there other reasons why you decided to go for this kind of very rustic, kind of heavy look? I think that the, the choice of materials sort of uh, is embedded into, into its, context of uh, where tequila is grown and you know it's like it, it's it's a uh, in its refinement the the volcanic rock uh, kind of becomes a really nice object it's it's uh, kind of the rustic part of being able to to try to control it uh, falls away and and um, yeah. And you talked uh, at the beginning of this session about how tequila is a key part of Mexican life. But tell us how and when do you drink tequila? You mentioned drinking it neat, which is, I think, the way that we are familiar with here in, here in London. But how is it integrated into Mexican life? How is it not? <laughs> it so starts with a lunch, or actually before the lunch, maybe. You, you, have, you have your first tequila, and then with your lunch, with a beer and the tequila, you have your lunch. And then that ends up uh, at the mariachis and the tenamba in the center of town. And kind of tequila accompanies uh, the, the, this, this kind of as a social actor, uh, a binder. Um, the, the, the interaction between between people uh, and and um, kind of a good time uh, that lasts yeah. a long time. I mean, multiple songs have written about it. It's a way of sharing your emotions. The only way that you can do it is 
<laughs> after a, to have a proper conversation after having a good bottle of tequila. But did you feel that your object had to be sort of somehow Mexican looking? Or is that just a kind of something that came out of the the influences? I, I guess we, we live in Mexico, no? so it's like, I, I don't think we, we will, we don't tend to think of our projects as let's make it uh, Mexican uh, looking, let's say, but we do think about our context and we're very much informed by our context and we're very much informed by the everyday life that we lead and uh, of course we do, we're architects, so we do, we are uh, a bit obsessed with the with the object itself, we're obsessed with the history of, of the object and its uh, ability to to write history in a way. So, I mean, it's like we tell our students to constantly look at where where does something come from? No? Where, where does, what, what does it do? Like, what does it mean to place a thing like this into the middle of the table that nobody might not know how to use? But I think we are very interested in that kind of dynamic that an object can produce. But we were not necessarily interested in it to look Mexican. I mean, I don't know if uh, if all of a sudden you place it in another, I don't know, in an Asian place, would it look Asian? I don't know, <laughs> but it definitely is made by Mexican hands. So maybe by by that in that way, you can share that idea. And of course, my Trodobel is a Mexican brand, and so I think that's just part of it. And this is part of the Celebrating Brilliance series by Maestro Dobel. And this is going to be a limited edition product. But what will happen to those limited edition pieces? Is it something that people can buy? Will they be in museums? How many will be made? Tell us about that side of things. So, yes, they will be available at Harvey Nichols in London sometime in the near future. And I hope people get to collect them and have them and interact with them in ways that we never thought about. <laughs> Well, it's been brilliant speaking to you. It's a beautiful object and congratulations. Thank you for having us and thank you for the conversation. I hope we could see you guys again. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>